folks, welcome back to part two of my 200 watt DIY solar system. My garage is now off grid and, uh, and in part one I showed you how I assembled and installed my eco-worthy roof racking system for my solar panels. And in this part, part two, I'm going to be showing the rest of the system, all the electrical components and the wiring and all that. Um, and hopefully you'll find it useful or entertaining. And a special shout out to Will Prouse of DIY Solar. Uh, a lot of the things that I put into my system I got from recommendations or discussions that I saw on his channel. So if you've not seen his channel before, I recommend you, you check it out. For example, my battery I got because he did a teardown uh, evaluation of that specific battery. and so. Luckily, Amazon still had some in stock and I ordered one. Uh, but they now have a, the same battery under a different name. And I looked at the fine print and that the current model that's available is from the same factory. So I believe it's the same battery, uh, but I don't do teardowns like Will does, so I couldn't be sure. But anyway, um, I got that, I got a uh, power meter um, that I got as a result of his recommendation and review. Um, and so it's uh, my system I think came out pretty good please watch all the way through and I think I might have one maybe two more um, parts to this but this part two is going to be about the things that I built uh, as part of my uh, system um, and the wiring and, and turning it on and everything working so please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and be sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get into the video. Okay folks, I've completed the bulk of the wiring and what I have is PV wire that's terminated with the PV connectors. It goes into this box. I had a fairly long length of this PV cable so I just pulled it all through and I have it running through a three-quarter inch PVC conduit across the roof and into this LB box and then down. So from below this is what it looks like. So I have this LB box that comes down through a couple of uh, 90 degree bends and into this box. This is the box for my DC breaker and disconnect. It's a plastic box. It's supposed to be weatherproof and waterproof. I need to use these uh, three-quarter male thread adapter, which will go in here. There. Lock nuts, and that's gonna go on like so. Okay, that's pretty tight. And in the box I have a 16 amp uh, breaker, DC breaker, because this is DC current that's flowing through here. And combined, they should not exceed about 10 amps. So I got a 16 amp just to be safe. It's mounted in a, a DIN mount uh, inside the box. And from the box, it goes down. into the ground. So a while ago I did some work here in the backyard right behind the house and so while I had everything torn up I dug down three feet or two and a half feet and buried these uh, one inch pipes just for future use. Uh, one of them I'm using to run my cable from the garage into the house um, and the one that I'm using now for the solar DC wire is this one on the right goes into the ground and out the other side it's only about 11 feet across but I wanted to get it in the ground so it goes into that LB box and then into the garage and comes out right there and so that comes out the wires are gonna run up so the charge controller will be up here along with the inverter. I'm gonna have the battery on this shelf right there. 
Now I just need to get the solar modules put onto the rack. So I'm going to cut the rest of these. The first one did get cut to the right size and it works as I would like to have it work. And it fit just fine. So I'm gonna cut the rest of these. All right, I've got all four of the brackets cut ready to install. Okay. So I'm gonna drill pilot holes at each cross. And once the pilot hole is, is drilled, I'm gonna drill from the backside with this thing firmly attached to a wood backing so that I can use the hole saw to, to cut a clean hole. got the holes all drilled. When I was clear cleaning the burrs off the uh, edges of the holes with sandpaper, I guess the sandpaper caught some of these uh, areas and scratched it. So, oh well, it's done now. it. So I'm going to have an on-off switch for each bank and each bank will have its own voltmeter and two double sets of quick charge 3.0 USB ports for charging up to eight devices at one time. This panel will get mounted onto this box and it's got flanges so I can mount this onto my board on the wall. I'll have the main DC power line going in right up the middle into the bottom of the case and it'll supply all of these. My new USB charging station. I've got a power on and off switch, voltmeter, and two double output USB uh, quick charge 3.0 outlets. I've got the same bank here except I only have one of the charge outlets here. I'm waiting for the second one to arrive. Right as I finished that last video segment, I got the other outlet from Amazon. So I put it in, it's plugged in, I mean hooked up and good to go. Originally, I started off with this little charge kit. It's got a PD outlet and a quick charge 3.0 USB outlet. And it comes with these flimsy, uh, they look like a 20 gauge or 22 gauge wire. And I just didn't feel good about charging my uh, battery bank or my phone or any other thing uh, through this thing. I wasn't too uh, confident. And so I thought about it and this is what I came up with. 
we are finished with that device. So as you can see, it's putting out a nice high voltage 2.3 amps charging my battery bank. And this is what I use normally to charge my phones. I have two of these. It'll, a full battery bank will charge my phones maybe three times if I needed to. So my solar experimenting and all started with this guy. This is a, uh, I think it's a five watt solar charger and it has a single USB charge port. And I used this for a while. I had two of them. I had used them to charge up two cheaper, smaller capacity battery banks. And I built this platform to be able to adjust for the sun angle. So during summer, I would have it up all the way like this. And during winter, I would have it down all the way like this. That was my first iteration of the solar system. Then I upgraded to actually a before I got this one, this is a 25 watt charger. Uh, before this I had a, uh, I think it was a 20 amp charger that I lost in the ocean. I had it on a boating trip and it blew off the boat and it was gone. So I got this one. This one is a bigger capacity. Oh, it's a 30 watt quick charge USB and the other two are regular charge USB. And I use this one to charge my both my power banks at once because it's a higher power and that served me for about a year and then I decided well I'm having to go out and move this thing around every day so I keep it under my patio cover during the night and then I unfold it put it out in the sun in the morning and let things charge up and then I put it away and I, I've been doing this now for about three years and I decided, well, it's finally time to do what I've always wanted to do, was to tinker with a, a real solar system. Well, here's my battery. It's a Zoom's lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour battery. This is my wire from my solar panels. It goes up into the charge controller, and then the battery output, I have it all tied in right here on the back of my inverter. I've got battery cable coming from my battery and the other side comes from the charge controller. So the charge output from there goes and everything's connected together on the back posts of this inverter. I've also ordered two jumper blocks, one positive, one negative. They're going to go here or maybe this way and so I don't have to keep fiddling with the uh, connections on the back of the inverter. Well, I have completed my solar uh, off-grid garage system. I got my last piece in last night and installed it. This is a uh, power current meter. I have my DC USB charging outlets and I'm currently charging two battery uh, power banks. I have my inverter turned on. Oh, and these are new too, by the way. Um, so they, they make it convenient to connect, disconnect, etc. Uh, when I first got the system, I just ended up putting the battery leads here as well as the charger leads. So I had two sets. And then when I got the, uh, the cheap little USB uh, adapter, I also connected them in here. And decided that was a little bit too much, uh, too cumbersome. So I went ahead and got these terminal blocks. My inverter is now connected up to two power strips. The first one is generally left on and that's what garage power is connected to. So from here it goes into this conduit and up and over the doorway and into the automatic switch. And that gets the utility power from there and also brings back the, the switched power when I'm on battery. That's what's powering it now. And then up, up and over to power the garage door opener. This one was recommended by Will Prouse. He said that this was actually quite a good meter and reasonably priced 
and I went online. Amazon has it for a bit more than what he had paid a while back, but I found an equivalent one that was about $37. So I ordered that. I, it came just in a couple days. It's mounted on a U-bracket right there because it only comes with a single screw. Let me see if you can see that. That has a wing nut. This is a wing nut that, that's holding it on. It's just a single screw that holds this display. And so I fashioned a U-bracket using two L-brackets. That gets plugged in to the shunt, and that shunt is in line of the negative battery lead. From here, it goes through the shunt and out the bottom, and that goes down to the battery. There's also a 12 volt power lead that powers the shunt sensor, and that's connected through this white wire. I didn't have any red wire that size. Through here and onto the positive terminal block. Oh, these are good. And that wraps up part two of my uh, 200 watt DIY off-grid system for my garage. Uh, I hope you're enjoying what I'm doing. If uh, you do, please remember to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.